Yes. So our next speaker um, almost needs no introduction. He is extremely famous in our community. Dr. Stutz from Five Step in Germany. He is a he is published in the field of lipedema. He um, is one of the most amazing surgeons. And to boot, he's a gentleman. He's a professional. He's caring. He's careful. And he's just an overall wonderful human being. And we are really honored to have you here today. Can you understand me? Oh, I'm not. Uh, I'm allowed it. Um, so, whenever I tell you something which you can't understand because it's not English, just tell me. Um, so, I'm, I'm very glad to be invited to share my knowledge over the last 20 years with Lipidemia, with Lipidema and Lipi Ladies uh, with you. I um, really appreciate that being invited to speak to you. Um, first of all, I would really like to thank at least four females which helped me so much to organize this this voyage to um, a certain part of the United States. Let me tell that Holly Armour, she was so, so helpful. She organized, she chaperoned me around the New York. I never got lost. So um, she was uh, such a great help. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also to Laurel. Dunstan Murphy, she is so, so devoted to get my legal things done. Thank you to you. I really appreciate it. We are here today, but also was very, very helpful, this lady, Dana Tikal, and she's down in Atlanta. She offered me for her hospitality, so she, I stayed with her for a whole week to uh, be in Dr. Bird's office to share my technique with her. So I'm not, but not at least my, my I really want to thank to Karen Hurst. She did a great step. She went from big United States, from a university, to my very, very small, tiny little place with a very small um, surgical unit. She, she, she really, I mean, that, that's not normal to go from <laughs> down to a state like this. So, and she shared her knowledge with me, and we had a great time discussing subject about lipedema. And she also was a very, very patient and, and devoted assistant during a couple of operations we did together. Thank you to you. So. So as I said, I would like to share my knowledge about lipidema and lymphedema over the last 20 years. So that's the place where I live. Whenever you, whenever you want to go to Germany, that's a very famous place. Most, some of you who are interested in music might know this place. Richard Wagner Festival, it's, it just ended now. It attracts people from all over the world. and. Uh, so they are booked seven years in advance. Whenever you plan to go to this festival, do it right in time. <laughs> so what is lipidema? So lipidema, it's just, uh, as it's written there, it's a symmetrical fatty disorder. So you, you get it distributed over your body in a not common way. Only females are affected, and what you know in this room mostly thigh, lower leg, arms. Sometimes buttocks, or oh, just go back. So, males are hardly ever affected. So it's always a disproportional fatty layer all over the body. The, your, your upper body is, at least in the beginning, very, very slim, and you, it shows a disproportionate appearance to the legs. We have a waist to hip ratio usually down lower than 0.7. Then the reason why this this um, this disease appears it's unknown, it's still unknown, but as it only affects female, so we think there might be a, a great influence on estrogen. 
it also has been shown that families are affected all over generations. So there is some heritage, there is some estrogen, but details and clear facts are not available at this moment. We have the symptoms are clear. So when you ask the patient what, what you suffer most, it's edema. During the day, especially in hot days, the leg starts swelling. They bruise easily. There's no need to be to that there is some really trauma. See that when they get up in the morning they find some bruises and they don't know where they come from. Often they have severe pain during the day, but it, it's increased the pain when they are squeezed, touched or poked. I usually ask my patient, what do you feel when a cat jumps down from the table on your lap? And that is, nobody would ever main, notice this, but lippy ladies know that's painful. So I, young mothers, I ask, what do you, what do you feel when your, your child, your tiny little child is jumping up and down on your thigh? So you can't stand it. So that's a, cl a clear symptom of a lippy girl. And also what they usually feel, cold sensations in the affected area. Mm -hmm. So, very important is the fact that lipidema is not a special kind of obesity. Not at all. Since it does not respond to diet, it does not respond to active, to exercises and activities. So that's a, a figure of the Colombian artist Botero, it's in my, it's depicted in my office. And everybody who went to my office has seen this tiny little sculpture. And it depicts quite clearly what the lipidema is. It's slender waist, you see the small upper body, you see the cortex, large cortex, and trunk like legs. It's not a disease of our days now. It's not because we eat the wrong things or we have not good nutrition. It's, it's a disease which is depicted in, in Egypt columns. It is depicted in uh, Bushman paintings in South Africa, for example. You find a slim upper body, great large buttocks and heavy trunk like this. You all know this, the most often it is confused with this kind, which is very common, obesity or adiposity. What makes it quite clear that it's a different condition is adiposity or obesity is painless. I always tell my patient, otherwise a whole nation would cry. We have cried quite a lot of obesity. <laughs> So, then obese people, never, they feel quite happy with it. So they, they never complain, you can squeeze them, poke them. It's nothing different to normal people. With lippy ladies, they usually have, what I said before, they have this, this thing, um, pain when you, when you squeeze the fish. I get a lot of patients referred to the diagnosis lymphedema because the leg swells. And so my general practitioner think, so that must be a lymphedema. But it, it's a rare, it's a rather rare condition compared with lipidema. And lipidema is always symmetrical. Lymphedema hardly is symmetrical. And we know from the lippy ladies and from the hand and feet at the beginning, or at least for a couple of years, are not affected. In lymphedema, you have this positive stemmer sign and it shows that your hands and your feet are affected. I, I try to pronounce it right. Steatopegia is um, just a fat bottom. <coughs> it's just an accumulation of fat and bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Keep this picture right. <laughs> it's just how much fun it is. <laughs> we have heavy legs. So this lady, 
I know any doubt has heavy legs, but she doesn't have any video. She's just a piece. Makes sense? Oh, just that. And this is what, what you would see in Africa quite often is this kind of feel of feature. It's just a huge fat bottle, which is a kind of ideal beauty. So uh, as you see in this lady, she shows it quite well. So she depicts it, she, she wants to express it. She wears a red shirt, uh, a red uh, dress to attract uh, the view, uh, the look of men. So she has quite normal legs and when they stop, when they are on diet, the bottle shrinks. So and it does not cause any pain. So it's I it's obvious it's probably not even a disease, it's just uh, an expression, an ethnic expression. Why do we think it's it's so related to estrogen is I ask kind of patient when did you when did your uh, uh, lipidema start? And I got 85 the great majority of them told me it started with puberty. And puberty, also when you ask the, uh, the patient's parents, they always tell you, my girl, our girl always had some heavy legs, she always looked different. So 85% have start with the puberty. We have another couple, which means pregnancies. We have 7%, they started with pregnancies, and then we have a mixture about uh, different onsets. Most of them had started with menopause. Uh, it, so it was obviously that they didn't have any real symptoms of a lipidema before. But we have also patients which started with lipidema after having a tragic loss in her family, for example. So, the husband died or something like this. They had never any problem with lipidema before, but after, let me say, a car accident, they all of a sudden got a lipidema, which is, uh, there's no explanation for it. But however, most of the great majority are, is related to estrogen. Um, you complain about uh, being not noticed or not diagnosed in USA because it wasn't that known over the past, over the last years. I asked my patient, how long does it take to get a decent diagnosis? So you see, even we, even we in Germany are quite far ahead of the USA at this moment. But even then, the majority is up to 10 years to get a diagnosis. The lucky thing about lipidema, it's easy to diagnose. So if you miss it, you didn't look at your patient. So. <laughs> what makes it easy? You ask your patient, how long did you have your progress? And they tell you, oh, it started with 13, 14, 15. And you ask, does your family have other family members? Do they show the same symptoms? And they say, yeah, my grandmother and my mother has, or my sister. So listen to them. Look at them. You have to undress them. If you just have a look at, your, at, the, at their ankles, you won't find the diagnosis. Get them undressed, have a look at them. So you have to see the fat distribution which is different, as we said. You have to have a look at your skin, at the skin texture. You look at the waist to hip ratio, and then you do palpation. You, you look at it, you, you palpate this, the, the durance of, of the skin and the durance of the soft tissue. You do the pinch test just to squeeze the, the, the tissue and ask him where does it hurt more. Usually people tell you, my arms compared with my belly, my arms are more painful, or my legs are more painful. Then you can do some, some uh, sophisticated uh, investigations which are not necessary to get a diagnosis. But it helps sometimes um, 
as, as we discussed yesterday, um, most of my patients starve. And um, even they tell me, we eat normal, I do a uh, bioimpedance analysis, I see the basic metabolic rate is down to 800 to 1,000 calories a day. That means even they think they eat normal, they stop. One of our biggest threats after the liposuction is to get people back to normal eating. 